Time and again, in post-consulate conditions, one fact emerges, whether it's the Balkans, whether it's Cambodia, whether it's now Afghanistan, rather, criminalization of the economy. The international community has been completely helpless in preventing criminalization of the economy. And that is where the other set of interests comes. So why is it that after a peace agreement, within five years, 50% of it reverts back to conflict? And part of it is that interests in insecurity, in instability, get to be greater than interest in stability. And that the political process that needs to become inclusive and produce national agreement actually does not take place. How did, so one can elaborate on this further, but how did success take place? Instead of failures, how do we look at success? First look at Singapore. Singapore of 1950s, Gunnar Mardel argued was going to explode. It exploded into growth. Of course, the same prediction was made regarding South Korea and Taiwan. But Singapore is the one we have studied very closely. First part is collective leadership. Lee Kuan Yew gets all the credit, but it was actually a team of three. Second, they simplified their developmental strategy, jobs and housing, as the core issue. Third, they went against the then prevalent notion of national economy and invited multinational corporations. And fourth, they were relentless in sensing opportunities. I'll illustrate one example. Singapore has become a major player in international banking based basically on realization that time could be put to their advantage. There was a gap of six hours when the banking system was not functioning as an international system. And Lee Kuan Yew sensed this and then scaled up to meet that. And based on this, they've become an extraordinary player. Spain, where again we had the privilege of talking to the six key ministers who were responsible for the transformation of Spain after 1975. And there, again, what is significant is transformation through rule of law. Every aspect of transformation was done through an extraordinary set of legal agreements. But second was also seizing the opportunity to join Europe and accept European standards of governance. Their most difficult challenge was how to dismantle a protectionist system and create the revenue basis. 25% of the Spanish population now is in university. And of course, they have above average European standards. But at the core of it, like Singapore, was a very simple mechanism creation of a domestic construction industry. Both Singapore and Spain demonstrate beyond doubt that the question of absorptive capacity that so much the aid system talks about cannot be dealt with unless there's a functioning domestic construction industry. And this very simple fact uh, does not receive attention. The other story that is equally striking is the story of American South. Alabama last year had $9 billion in tourist revenue. Alabama, Governor George Wallace says Alabama, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. Georgia today would be the 17th largest economy of the world if it were an independent country. Yet its governor grew up in a house without running water uh, or, and went to a one-room school. And here, again, investment in human capability and infrastructure and a relentless pursuit of, of change is imperative. Southern states of the United States now have 91% 90, of, the, of the income of northern states, but the purchasing power is greater. So there are major lessons again uh, there. 